Today, we are going to take up a new lesson on concept, aims, objective, scope, and principle of health education. So now, introduction. Health education is a continuum of learning experiences that enable students as individuals and as members of society to make informed decisions modify behaviors and change social conditions in ways that are health enhancing and increase health literacy. It is based on a multidisciplinary foundation of knowledge. The intent of the health education is to promote the individual's competence regarding health, well-being and safety. The task of the health education is to develop the individual's cognitive, social, functional, and ethical capabilities. Thus, health education, like general education, is concerned with the change in knowledge, feelings, and behavior of people. In its most usual form, it concentrates on developing such health practices as are willing to bring about the best possible state of well-being. So now, health education. Health education is the consciously constructed opportunity for learning involving some form of communication designed to improve health literacy, including improving knowledge and developing life skills which are conducive to individual and community health. In other sense, health education is any combination of learning experiences designed to help individual and communities improve their health by increasing their knowledge or influencing their attitude. The WHO Health Promotion Glossary describes health education as not limited to the dissemination of health-related information, but also fostering the motivation, skill, and confidence necessary to take action to improve health, as well as the communication of information concerning the underlying social, economic, and environmental conditions impacting on health, as well as individual risk factors, risk behaviors, and use of the health care system. A broad purpose of health education, therefore, is not only to increase knowledge about personal health behavior, but also to develop skills that demonstrate the political feasibility and organizational possibilities of various forms of action to address social, economic, and environmental determinants of health. So now we have the concept of health education. The field of health education needs to establish a conceptual basis that provides a legitimate focus and direction for health education. Health education should recognize that notions of health are human construct which are restricted by man's interpretation of the functional integrity of the body and mind and relative to the activities and interests of individual societies. Health education should define health as that state of body and mind functioning which effort man the ability to strive towards his functional objectives and his culturally desired goals. The function of health education should be to impart knowledge for the purpose of developing the powers of reason and judgment in order to help people make their own choices about patterns of living which enhance the well-functioning of the body and mind. 
So now we have M's of health education. For this, we have number one, to inform general public about promotion of healthy living. Number two, to create and inform body of opinion and knowledge. Number three, to give the public right information regarding medication. Number four, to facilitate the acceptance and proper uses of medication. Number five, to ensure that the community regards health as an asset. Number six, to equip the individual with skills, knowledge and attitude in order to help him solve his own problems. Number seven, to promote the development by one's actions and efforts and proper use of the health services. Number eight, the aim of imparting health education to children is mainly to help them develop a sound physique and also to acquaint them with the laws of health. Number nine, early diagnosis and management. Number 10, health promotion and disease prevention. Number 11, utilization of available health services. After this, we have objective of health education. Some of the objectives of health education are highlighted below. Number one, to increase knowledge of the factors that affect health. Number two, to encourage behavior which promotes and maintains health. Number three, to cultivate the desirable health practices and health habits. Number four, to enlist support for public health measures when necessary to praise for appropriate governmental action. Number five, to encourage appropriate use of health services, especially preventive services. Number six, to inform the public about medical advances, their uses and their limitations. Number seven, to provide information to the people about healthy living. Number eight, to establish a scientific attitude towards health. Number nine, to identify health problems and take preventive measures against communicable diseases. Number 10, to improve environmental sanitation and cleanliness of their home and surroundings. Number 11, to know and to appreciate the view that health is an asset to every individual and good health is the foundation of prosperity. Number 12, to teach the student to fight against superstition and prejudices in the community regarding bad health practices. Number 13, to influence and motivate the students, children, adults, parents to attend periodical medical examination through health education program. Number 14, to enable the individual to know the effects of exercise, race, recreation on health and propagate the danger of population explosion on health. Number 15, to appreciate the health programs undertaken by the school and community to improve it. After this, we have the scope of health education. The health education is a very vast subject. It has a very wide and broad scope. It is dependent and closely related to many other aspects besides health. These aspects include housing, economic security, agriculture or industrial prosperity, etc. Normally, health education includes the following. Number one, food and its importance in the development of human body. Number two, 
water, air, light, physical exercise, recreation, race, and sleep, etc. Number three, adverse effect of abnormal conditions and bad habits on the physical and mental health of an individual. Number four, prevention of diseases and their causes. Number five, mental health, domestic hygiene, sex hygiene, and community hygiene. Number six, emergency and first aid. Number seven, safety education. Number eight, Consumers education and health education. Number nine, misuse of alcohol, tobacco, and other stimulant and depressant. Number ten, international health. After this, we have principles of health education. Some of the main principles of health education are as follows. Number one interest number two participation number three comprehension number four motivation number five reinforcement number six known to unknown number seven learning by doing so now interest it is a psychological principle in which student listen only to those things which is of interest to them. Before starting any health related topic, the interest of the student should first be considered. Health educators must find the real needs of the students and only then the teaching learning process will be effective. Health related programs can thus be initiated successfully. So now we have participation. Participation is based on the principles of active learning through group discussion, panel discussion, workshop, seminar, etc. They all are provide great opportunities for active learning. Health education is not just the personal elements of an individual but also includes social well-being so health education must include all the various elements which help in an overall holistic development of a person the personal and community health are closely interlinked and interdependent so now comprehension in health education one must determine the level of literacy and understanding for which the teaching is directed. Children in the low level find it difficult to understand the meaning of health and this is the main reason for them lacking in interest regarding health. Language for communication is an important part in delivering health education. The language for communication should be understandable to the students. One barrier to communication is the use of words which cannot be understood. Uses of technical or medical terms should be avoided as far as possible. So, teaching should be within the mental capacity of the children. After this, we have motivation. We know that in every person, there is a fundamental desire to learn something. In common terms, awakening of this desire is called motivation. There are two types of motives, that is primary motives and secondary motives. Generally, Primary motives are sex, survival which initiate people into action. Basically, these motives are inborn desires. But 
secondary motives are based on those desires created by the external forces or incentives. Some of the secondary motives are praise, love, rivalry, rewards, punishment, and recognition. Therefore, in health education, motivation has become an important factor. The incentive must be emphasized positively as against the negative. After this, we have reinforcement. A person cannot learn all that is new in a single period. Repetition at various intervals is useful. It insists comprehensive understanding so health education needs reinforcement in order to boost up the health of an individual. So now we have known to unknown. For imparting health education, it is always recommended to proceed from the known things to the unknown things. For bringing out things from the known to unknown, the prerequisite or previous knowledge of an individual should always be considered first. By understanding the known things, only then new insights can be developed. Thus. It should be started from where the individuals are and what they understand. Otherwise, it cannot proceed to new knowledge. In this way, systematic knowledge is built up and a wide horizon of new ideas and knowledge is gained. So now we have learning by doing. Learning is an action process it has process of continuity, not a memorizing one of the narrow saints. Here, we can mention one of the Chinese proverb, If I hear, I forget. If I see, I remember. If I do, I know. So in the learning process, it needs doing or so-called practice on regular basis is very much important. Therefore, health habits, like other habits, should be cultivated through practice and by following certain rules rigidly. So now we have conclusion. Health education is concerned with the change in knowledge, feelings, and behavior of a person. The function of Health education should be impart knowledge for the purpose of developing the powers of reason and judgment in order to help people make their own choices about pattern of living which enhance the well functioning of the body and mind. Health habits like other habits should be cultivated through practice and by following certain rules rigidly. Thank you very much.